Hey guys, what is up? Eric Hill here, one half of the Hill Twins. Today we're back at it again with another video. Um, today, as you guys can see, I'm joined by Sean Bartley. Hey. Yeah, um, you guys may know him. Um, he's been just upcoming, so he's been featuring a lot of our videos and our hustle hide channels. And uh, we got a pretty cool, uh, pretty cool game for you guys today. So. Without further ado, let's just kind of jump into what we're going to be doing, Sean. Yeah, so we jumped on our tap. Uh, Eric has put together a pretty nasty uh, set 15 trunks list. And uh, I've been playing Sin Shenron pretty loyally since before Nats. So this is my main deck, so we wanted to go head to head and see how trunks stacks up with it. Yeah, right. And, um,. It's 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 a pretty pretty it's a pretty good match. It's a pretty good match. So we're just gonna go ahead and commentate the match. Um, our match is obviously pre-recorded, so we'll be um, commentating over it. And uh, before we start, we want you guys to drop a like, guys. And if you are not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe to the channel because we're dropping we're dropping so much content. Absolutely. It's absolutely insane, and we want you guys to be a part of it. We want you guys to. Um, you know, ultimately enjoy what we have provided for you guys. So yeah. Okay. I'll go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and start the video now. Cool. Alright, cool. There we go. Alright, so the video started. So you rolled a thirteen and four. To my four, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Gosh, and it, I feel like once again I'm playing you over in person, and your damn cursed dice, and I just, I just can't <laughs> ever go first. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know we can't see your hand, which is unfortunate, but obviously you know we, we see my hand here, and um, I, I recall what I drew. Um, I focused on making sure that I had the Vegeta units in because obviously it's powerful against your deck. And I really wanted to see the 8-drop, uh, so I milled for that, but I opened with an Oceanus, which ends up being pretty relevant Right. Uh, going forward. And as you guys see, he got the Oceanus here, and this is a pretty pretty good turn one play. He drops his ball, and this is good. But I think one of the cool parts about this Trunks leader um, is that he actually has an activate main where you don't even have to attack. You can just pitch a card, draw two, and instantly, you know, I am not really, una I'm really unaffected by that Shin Shinron. But going into this matchup, I just, I, you know, I know what Shin Shinron can do, and it was just so scary. So I was kind of just kind of like biding time. Um, you know? Yeah, for sure. Uh, and, I, and I'm in a similar spot, right? Because on the Awakened side, your leader says that I drop doesn't matter. It's not a factor. Basically. So I can't go into that in, in this game early because it's just going to get worse. Yes. Uh, so I had to really think and kind of change my strategy, which you said you also did as well. Right, yeah. And so my turn was pretty simple. I you know, wolf the card drew two and then I summoned this uh this this searcher and I was able to pick up my unit uh, not my unison, my dub my my super combo. And if you see I had one super combo and I was able to search for another one which was really good. And uh, you know now you're going into your second turn, you activated another Oceanus and I'm yeah, just I'm like hoping. Yeah, I'm just like, Oh man, you know, I know that once you drop this eight drop you know, he's going to have barrier. I have no real way to get rid of barrier, so, you know. Right. Yeah. Having played against a lot of black, I know that barrier is definitely a weakness for a black. That's going to be a strength for me in the matchup. Uh, I also recognize that before you're awakened, and in the early turns, I have an opportunity to establish a board, because while you do awaken on turn two and on tap one, you don't necessarily want to pay one to warp one of my battle cards. Exactly. So my thought here was, put as much as I can on board to force you to have to deal with it. Right, right. And um, this turn two is pretty explosive. You were able to attack, search, you were able to summon the four drop and special summon the, um, the Nataron Shinron, which is a very powerful card against a lot of different decks, but particularly this because I need my, my, my attacks to go through. And now you go, you got this eight drop, and you was able to sack that that guy off. He served his purpose, and now you're sitting here looking pretty at two energy with what? What is that? Uh, Twelve energy. You could sell Xeno me if you wanted to, which is hilarious. 
you know, and I'm going to two energy and I'm, I'm moving a little slow. Um, and it's funny because slow is not the best word. We we're only on turn two, but look what you were able to do on turn two. And I guess that's kind of where I'm engaging that from, you know? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, relative to most decks, and Shenron does get to do a lot early, yellow is typically uh, energy hungry, so can't do a ton. You do get the Urus in here. Uh, you are going to awaken, which is pretty powerful. Yeah, yeah. Um, one of the cool things about this deck is just being able to awaken on turn three. Obviously, turn one, you're going to warp a Sage, draw two cards, and then once you're able to summon her, you know, usually warping the top three cards of the deck will get you a unison. So, right. I mean, we'll get you a uh, uh, an awaken, which is very powerful. So I was able to draw two, awaken, draw one, and then now I can attack and draw more. And you're tapped out, so this feels good. Um, I, you know, my unison's at three. You go ahead and block, which is really good. I had an option to play something from the warp. And you see I was able to also set up my Gogeta right here, but I, I just yeah. didn't feel like... You know, I knew it was going to get rested because of Nataron, and it was smart because you decided not to rest the Unison. Like, that's pro plays. You know, because it's like, okay, well, rest Unison or rest something that you don't know what I can do. You don't know what the height of this turn two could be. And it was smart not to, like, rest Unison because I, if you didn't, I would have definitely summoned Thor and, 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 and attacked and warped the Nataron right then and there. Right. I did lose damage on my turn, not swing with the A drop, but I didn't want to have to keep Nataron in rest mode. It's an obvious swing. You swing your leader and you were sent into it. You don't care about my life. No, exactly. That allows you to summon Gogeta. And now I'm taking the two life anyway, right? Exactly. So I figure I'll just block your leader, keep my life on a high. If you want to tap the one to get rid of Nadaron, that's cool, but you can't Gogeta me. So I figure I'll say if you choose not to do either of those things and just pass, which makes a lot of sense, especially given your hand. Yeah, you know, I, I, I was like, well, he's going into turn three. I know that... You can have a big head or something like that. So, you know, and, and if you look at my hand, it's pretty sad. I have three super combos at this point. Um, you know, and I know, like, hey, look, I don't have to play against Slug, so these super combos are going to go nuts. And so right. I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. You attack, and just instantly I drop a pan. And pan is value here because I know that you could have a big turn three, you know? So now all I have to do sure. is worry about a, a leader attack. But I think this is where you establish your unison. And that's kind of where the game gets a little twisted for me because I have to invest a little bit to try to, like, you know, stop that unison. Um, but, yeah. Yeah, you do You do go ahead and block here uh, to protect your unison. It's kind of funny because I had no intentions of comboing anyways. Yeah. Um, but the, the block actually ends up being a slight hidden advantage for me because now I do get to go into the four drop and keep your leader from attacking which is going to help me keep my Vegeta alive. You alluded to me playing my units now. Yeah, and that's where, like, I feel like my misplay was right there. Like, you know, when you got a blocker, you know, my goal is... And you have this 8-drop on board, but I know you can't attack. I know you're not going to attack with battle cards. So right. I know that the Unison wasn't going to die. The moment that you attacked into Unison, whether it was a good play or not, you allowed me to untap, and I should have just left him because then your four drop wouldn't have been able to affect him. And that's what really slowed me down going into my next turn, because now I don't have draw power, I don't have another attack towards a unison, and you have two blockers on board. So now I gotta figure out what it is that I wanna do. Right, and I have effectively negated uh, your big battle cards. So it's gonna cost you some energy investment to deal with my board, which I'm pretty comfortable with, at this point, uh, that Vegeta is a lifeline for me, so it's more important for me to protect that than my life, even. Right. So I go ahead and instantly just, you know, leader effect, spirit boost one. I'm getting that around off the board because I'm just like he's just gonna yeah. he's gonna be too much value, and he's the reason why, you know, I wasn't able to go as hard as I wanted to last turn, and so um, that's really big right then and there, and you know, now I'm able to just kind of pressure Unison. Still sucks that I can't attack with Lee, but you got this big ass blocker, and <laughs> it's like... Yeah, and again, that's one of the advantages that Sin has, being able to play these big body blockers. Uh, it's hard to deal with that, right? What could you have done? You could have dumped your hand into it, but that's really neg. You do have this Poutine, though, which is a very powerful card. Why don't you 
speak about that. Yeah, so this is a new card coming out of set 16. Uh, it's, it's just very powerful. I haven't heard people talking about it, and I'm just like, let me go ahead and use this card so people can know what the hell is the vibes, because this card is nuts. She's dark overarm, so she's good because she's, she's overarm, and you, you need overarm, and she's cheap overarm. She's just three. And um, she has no energy requirement in terms of when can she be played. She's just one energy. You play her. She's a blocker. And when she's played, she special summons a new demon realm token. These are the new tokens that are just, you know, have just been introduced. And um, basically activate battle. She can pop a demon token, draw a card, and get, 20, uh, get 10k. So she becomes effectively a 25k blocker or a 25k attacker for that first attack and block. Yeah. And um, she, she's powerful because, you know, she has a way of staying alive. And so as you guys saw, I attacked and I was able to pop the token to, you know, untap her. And now he decides to block. And I'm like, well, you know what? You're gonna drop a four drop Sin. I'm gonna just, your hand is low. And that's one of the big disadvantages of Sin. Uh, whereas I have a nine drop hand. Obviously he's not awakened yet. So I was like, well, you know, I wanna capitalize on this, screw it. Let's 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 try to get you to discard some cards because his you know having no hand is perfectly fine when you can summon eight and nine drop big bombs like you know right. so I I was comfortable letting it die I had anticipated that I have another uh, Nuova in hand so my goal here was to be able to play that I assumed that if I swung with the eight drop then you would actually warp it which would allow me to play the four drop off Nuova. Uh, the unfortunate thing is that I don't actually have a one-drop play on my turn to capitalize, so my turn ends up being a little bit weird. Right. Um, uh, but I do, I do go into my turn with Vegeta still alive, which I was pretty happy with. Yeah, I was contemplating on summoning the one-drop and attacking it. I just, I, you know, I'm at six life, so it's not terrible when you're only at four energy. So obviously, secret is not really available, and you do have access to big head if you should push it. Um, I just didn't want to deal with like just since Shimon has a way of just exploding, and I didn't want to be on the back end of that. So I was just like, you know what? I just I, I need to survive in order to win versus trying to be gung ho and fall into some trap that I didn't expect because your deck is, the height of your deck is just so amazing, right? Resilient, so. Sure. A little bit of a misplay here. I do charge the one drop ball. I recognize too late that I was in a position where I couldn't make the play that I was hoping for. Um, my choice here now is to pivot into playing defensively. I know that Realistically, no matter what you do, you're not going to be able to kill me through Vegeta's effect. So I feel comfortable just kind of playing defensively for a turn until I can kind of establish my game plan. Yeah, and obviously you pass with four energy up. And during this point, I was like, yo, what the hell is going on? Like, four energy? <laughs> I'm like, yo, am I going to get reposed? I'm going to get Nimbus? I'm going <laughs> to, like, come on. It's turn four yeah. and you pass with four energy up. So I'll go into my turn, I'll go ahead and I charge and you know, this uh this Kai, she loves me. She just she just kept popping up. And one of the cool things I love about this unison, which we spoke about before, is that she just sticks around. Like obviously right. in this game I'm not utilizing the other effect just because of how I'm forced to play against this deck. But um but yeah, you know, I'm she she just sticks around, so I'm like, okay, cool. And you see, instantly, yeah. I go right into leader effect. I'm like, yo, that nine drop came back in. I don't want to deal with him. Warp him. Yeah, getting rid of the eight drop here is pretty, pretty plus for you. You don't, you know that you can't bombard me uh, with battle cards this turn. So just saying, hey, that eight drop is gone is a pretty good decision here. Right. Uh, I do see my one super combo of the game <laughs> at this point, which I do, I do use. Uh, I felt that I needed to see more options. Unfortunately, I drew two Rage Balls off the Super Combo, wow. which ends up working out in my favor, but wasn't what I wanted to see. Right, and here, I'm at six life, and I you see the Demon token, the Demon negate in my hand, yeah. so I'm like, you know what? Let me go ahead and tag, apply more pressure. You're at like six or eight cards in hand, and you know, you're unawakened. I can go ahead and just apply pressure, get you down some life, and now I'm at five life. I have the token alive, 
you see me go ahead and dock over them again for another Putin. I'm able to special yep. summon another token. Now, pro plays would have been to just attack with her, leave the token live, because you're going into turn five. And yeah, leave the token live and have the demon negate. And now I have two tokens to be able to untap two blockers and draw two cards. That would have been uh, pro plays. Um, going into your turn five because I, I, I turn sin for turn five is really big and I was able to apply some pretty good pressure here uh, Which was cool, and I, I think I leave her up. I, I think oh So yeah, you final flash her and no, I don't leave her up I think I attack with her again, which I yeah, I think I probably yeah. should have just once you final flash should have just left her up And I would have been able to block three times next turn, which would have been really nice yeah. Awesome. You do eat at my hand here yes. uh, pretty good. You get the final flash, you get the double strike. strike. I knew what was in my hand, so I felt comfortable dropping those cards to preserve my life. Don't want to get into a situation where I can be double strike down in the event that I can't kill you this turn. Right. But looking at your board state, knowing that I can no longer stop you from playing Gogeta, I, f I go into my turn five feeling... This is a win now turn. I know that my hand has kind of been put together in such a way where I can't push for game. For me, it was more of a question of how many negates do you have? How many super combos do you have? Which you guys watch, you can see he does have four. Um, can I kind of overcome your defenses? Right. Don't be fooled. This is a highly defensive deck, or it can be. Right, right. And it's so funny because, like I said, even this deck that we're talking about, um, the black deck, Black is so aggressive, but with these new cards, they're able to be aggressive and defensive. Like, look at Putin. I'm able to block and attack, untap her, and that is a form of aggression. And obviously, you see here, you know, going into your turn, your leader started to conk out, but you do awaken. Yeah. So you are 15K. You are awakened here at this point. And, yeah. um, you know, you summon this one drop in the Wover, and you rest it. And I tried to clone your leader. <laughs> to see if it would register, but it didn't, so. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. No idea why that happened. But I do want to say, uh, just to comment on my turn a little bit, uh, I recognize that I need to establish a board. Uh, so I go ahead, as we re restart the game here, I go ahead and play the one-drop ball, awaken, try to see some more cards, but more importantly than that, have a battle card on board for Nuova. Nuova was the key piece to this turn. If I don't have access to that, I cannot win this game. I cannot establish a board. I do get the nine drop out, which is not amazing in this matchup. Uh, but I figured it's a 30k pressure. So let's see what I can make out of it. Right. So here, I think I negate. And I, I don't think I should have negated it because I still took the life regardless and you was able to... He was also able to just, you know, stop me from even blocking. So right. I would have another block, which is essentially another negate, and then another block here. And, you know, that would have been good. But you go ahead and you attack with lead now. Um, you know, if I was going to take the life, I probably should have just kept that demon negate for the la for worst case scenario. But I did it because right. I knew that you couldn't cooler me here, which was weird. But you see I have the pan in my hand. And at this point, when you attack with lead, I probably should have just tapped the one for pan and ate the leader attack and that way you, you only got three energy i i shut the the the, the turn down um right. but instead i go ahead and i no negates pop the token because he is negated it's no longer blocking so draw and you know be able to uh untap her as you see yeah which is pretty powerful right um you essentially establish a negate a blocker and a blocker through that uh, I did negate the token skills, but in any other matchup, that's you're stopping three swings with that. Right, thing. right, right. That's pretty powerful. Yeah, and like I said, you three energy up. So Kula's really not live here because it's, no. it's no point. So looking at this scenario, I probably should have just right off for of this attack right here. I probably should have just panned you and blocked because you went and you attacked the other guy. Yeah, that's a yeah. swing into Goku. Into Goku. Uh, in retrospect, it should have probably been towards leader. But I was just trying to see if I could bait something, make something happen. Right. Uh, and I wasn't super sure that I could win this turn anyway. You did go ahead and block, which was favorable. I was wanting you to block, but I didn't think you would. 
I have the Omega in hand, so I'm thinking if you don't block, then I will rest the blocker. So yeah, uh, you, would, you wouldn't have gotten value out of it anyway, but I do agree that the pan is probably the best decision. Yeah, and you didn't attack lead here, did you? Um, I blocked. So I think you attacked one of my battle cards. And I should have not... I should, I could have negated here as well and got rid of the Nuova. So that, that way I stopped the, uh, the Selzino as well. But I just totally forgot about Selzino here until you did it. And that's when I was just like, wow. So you picked off yeah. the pan. You picked up a super combo. And then you picked off another um, uh, a super combo. And yeah. that's just pretty good. And it's, it's kind of forcing me to use this, uh, this kind of gate right here. You don't have to. Uh, if you don't, you pretty much auto lose the game at that point. Um, yeah. So it's a good decision. I anticipated that, but I needed to drop your hand down a little bit for what I'm going to ultimately end up doing here, which is to play the big head triple strike 30k dragon. Right, right. And I saw this and I was just like, damn, you know, I played this turn completely, not completely wrong. I think the... the the first couple of attacks was fine, but when I noticed that you wasn't stopping, I should have pivoted to say, you know what, what more can you do? And this is what players have to start thinking. What more can an opponent do? How much more? You could have three super combos in your hand, and I would have just messed up by not shutting your turn down. And right. I, I had the access to do it. I should have did it, but I did it, and it's fine. And, you know, surprisingly, your hand was not the best at all. You... You go up to 60k, and I was surprised because I said, wow, there is a chance that I, I, I could get past this, but just considering that you didn't have any super combos, which is, which is awkward, obviously your deck doesn't, you know, it, it doesn't really draw too much, it does more searching, but, you know, and so you go to 60 and I go to 55, and that is the game, and um, it was it was an yeah. interesting game. Um, my, my only, my only issue with, with, with how I proceeded with this turn was just, you know, not identifying that after all those attacks, high, how higher could your ceiling go? And I didn't right. see Selzino. I didn't see Big Head and I knew you had three open energy. And once you tapped the one for the allies absorbed and you attacked with that. I should have thought deeper and to say, you know what, let me shut this turn down now because you can't cooler my pan. So if you're going to attack right. me, you're going to go neg. And, you know, I didn't identify that. Um, like I said, your hand, it really wasn't the best in terms of firepower, but it was, it was good in terms of the type of explosion that you could create, which obviously... You know, you created the Big Bang and pushed my shit. In. But, um, yeah, well, that's the goal. That's the goal. Of sin. Uh, I don't believe in the strategy of waiting until turn six. I don't think that that is effective enough right now. I think you do have to try to kind of make your win condition a little sooner than that. In this game, for me, that was turn five. Uh, I didn't have certain things to be more aggressive, and your deck is highly defensive. So I needed to see the Z the cells, you know, I needed to see Big Head to be able to create a scenario which I could win. Uh, but I think that could have gone either way. Right, right, yeah. And um, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll run it back uh, for sure because I am curious to see um, how this Black Trunks deck can compete with other decks in the meta that are already solidified. Um, yeah. So... You know, it's just cool to see how set 16 decks are going to be able to interact with the meta. And that's the hope, right? We, with these new sets coming out, we want to see how well these decks can do. Because obviously, it, it's their point in even playing this deck. If it can't compete with some of the modernized decks that are already established. Yeah. And so, um, it's interesting. I'm having a lot of fun with this deck. And um, yeah, I'm having a lot of fun with it. I'm just curious to see how it's going to continue to shape. Well, how I'm going to continue to shape it now. Yeah, I think the deck ceiling is really high. It gets to do some really cool and unique things. Uh, Black is looking really strong going into set 16, and I'm excited to see what players like yourself are able to do with this deck upon release and does it stack up against, you know, the heavy hitters of the format. Right, right. Yeah, 
indeed. So yeah, guys, that's the video. Hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed it. Um, like I said, we were uh, joined here today by Sean. Um, you know, we just want you guys to go ahead and like this video. If you enjoy the content, subscribe if you are new to the channel. Um, and just look forward to more content to come. And if you guys like the Untapped series, go ahead and leave a comment below. Let us know so we can go ahead and get more of these games uploaded and stuff like that. All right? Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Good game. Right, right. Good game, bro. All right, guys. You know the vibes. Like always, stay super. Stay super. <laughs>